On a cold October night in 2003, Shirley Yates of Seattle, Washington was just about to get ready for bed when she heard a knock at the door. She approached the door and asked the person on the other side to identify themselves. The voice outside responded immediately. It was a salesman who just wanted a few moments of Mrs. Yates' time. This was odd for two reasons. First, it was almost 10 o'clock at night, much later than is usual for door-to-door -door salesmen. And second, the knock hadn't come from Mrs. Yates' front door. It was coming from the door to her bathroom. Has your home ever been visited by a door-to-door -door salesman? If you were born in the last 40 years, then your answer to that question is probably no. In the age of online shopping, the idea of a salesperson going from house to house hawking vacuum cleaners or encyclopedia sets feels like a relic from the past. It's highly unlikely you'd ever see one walking the streets nowadays, and equally unlikely that one would knock on your front door. However, if you live in Washington State, you might need to be wary of a certain salesman who is still doing the rounds. SCP-1879, also known as the Indoor Salesman and the Doorman, is a phenomenon that manifests randomly in homes throughout Washington. Subjects will hear persistent knocking from the interior doors of their homes, and the affected door becomes classified as SCP-1879-1. The knocking doesn't stop until the door is opened, at which point the subject will be greeted by SCP-1879-2. A Caucasian man of indeterminate age standing around 170 centimeters tall. The man will claim to be a salesman and immediately try to pitch a bizarre product to the subject whose home he's just invaded. The SCP Foundation was first alerted to the existence of the indoor salesman when they had intercepted a 911 call coming from the home of Mrs. Shirley Yates. She had opened the door to her bathroom in an attempt to get the salesman to stop knocking, and once he was in her home, he refused to leave. According to Yates, he kept disappearing in and out of random doors in her house. Foundation Field Agent Rogers was equipped with a recording device and sent in to investigate the case with several other agents. When he arrived at the home, he found Mrs. Yates inconsolable. SCP-1879-2 was still rapidly talking at her, and strangely enough, the product he was holding and trying to sell to her was a Border Collie puppy. As soon as Agent Rogers entered the room, the man shifted his attention away from Mrs. Yates and towards him. He then started trying to sell the puppy to Agent Rogers. Agent Rogers did not want to purchase this puppy, but he found that the man spoke so quickly and urgently, he couldn't get a word in edgewise. The man was begging Rogers to take the puppy, practically shoving it in his face, saying that he didn't need any money, and that the only payment he needed would be some of your time. Rogers grew so annoyed at being talked over and interrupted that he ordered the other field agents to apprehend the indoor salesman. They did so, but as soon as the agents walked him out of the front door of the house, he disappeared without a trace. The agents remained in the area to monitor the situation. SCP-1879-2 manifested again in Mrs. Yates' home six hours later, still trying to trade the puppy for no money, just a little of her time. Twelve years, to be precise. After hours and hours of being worn down by this supernaturally pushy salesman, Yates relented and agreed to take the puppy, and immediately disappeared. The indoor salesman then disappeared himself through the closet door before he could be apprehended again. At a loss for what to do, the agents administered Class A amnestics to Mrs. Yates' family and left. The reason for her disappearance wasn't fully known until 12 years later in 2015, when she reappeared in the same spot she disappeared from, having no concept of how much time had passed. The puppy really had just cost her 12 years of her life. Stories like that of Shirley Yates have popped up all over the state in the years since, from Everett to Walla Walla and everywhere in between. Due to the random nature of SCP-1879 events and the way the indoor salesman can disappear instantly in and out of any door in a building, the SCP Foundation has been unable to capture him. The best they've been able to do is monitor 911 calls from across the state, listening for key words that might indicate another SCP-1879 infestation. When such an event is reported, the Foundation deploys Mobile Task Force Row 4, aka Shoes Salesman. This task force's entire purpose is to minimize the amount of harm the indoor salesman is able to cause by intercepting him before he can make a sale. This is a very important task, 
as evidenced by the story of Mrs. Yates, since while the products this salesman sells might be innocent, he doesn't accept payment in any normal currency. The price he asks for his products are always bizarre and often deadly. If all someone loses is 12 years of their life, they could be considered to be getting off easy. In one instance, the product being sold was a single red rose in exchange for the subject's heart. Once the deal was sealed, the subject dropped dead on the spot, with an autopsy revealing that his heart and circulatory system vanished from inside his body. In another, the indoor salesman offered 220 bananas and told the subject to simply give him some sugar. The subject agreed, and all candied goods in the home disappeared. In a third, the indoor salesman was trying to sell a thermonuclear warhead, the price of which was the subject's soul. The subject accepted, and at first nothing seemed to have happened. The Foundation confiscated the warhead and placed it into non-anomalous containment. Later that day, the subject went to listen to some music, only to find that two of her vinyl records had gone missing, Lady Soul and Almighty Fire, by world-famous soul singer Aretha Franklin. So. Even though he's incredibly invasive, annoying, and his transactions can be deadly, the indoor salesman still maintains a sense of humor. The fact that the Foundation can't capture the indoor salesman means that a lot of questions about him remain unanswered. The biggest by far is why he does what he does. In most SCP-1879 events, the indoor salesman seems frantic and desperate to make a sale. Often he will refer to having quotas and deadlines to meet, which implies some other unseen entity that he has to answer to. These questions remain unanswered, because all attempts to interrogate the indoor salesman have been unsuccessful. When he manifests in a location, it's impossible to get him to stray from his sales pitch, and he disappears as soon as he successfully sells his wares. However, there was one instance where, after an SCP-1879 event took place, Foundation agents were there to witness a rare interaction between the indoor salesman and his mysterious employers. Agent Rogers and the rest of the shoes salesmen were called out to a home in Spokane, where rapid knocking had begun to emanate from the bedroom door. Equipped with recording devices, Rogers was able to record the voice of the indoor salesman coming from inside the bedroom. In the recording, the salesman grumbled to himself about not being able to meet his quota by tomorrow, saying that if he didn't, he'd be stuck in this world for the next century. He started knocking again, yelling through the door that he knew they were home. He kept knocking until he was interrupted by the sound of a phone ringing. The indoor salesman was heard picking it up and Rogers managed to record the conversation. The person calling was, apparently, the indoor salesman's boss, who was calling to complain about his performance. Only one side of the conversation was heard, but evidently the indoor salesman's boss wasn't too happy about receiving two Aretha Franklin albums as payment instead of an actual human soul. The indoor salesman apologized for the joke, then told his boss, It won't happen again. Please don't hurt it. I'll meet the quota this time, I swear. He hung up grumbling to himself again, I better get to move up to Elise Accounting this time. I've paid my dues and then some. Rogers finally opened the door to the apparent disappointment of the indoor salesman, who was hoping to speak with the home's owner and was quite annoyed at having another one of his sales interrupted by MTF Row 4. Rogers tried to ask the indoor salesman who he'd just been speaking to on the phone, but as usual, the salesman started talking over him. Now see here, let's think logically, he said. You know I'm not going to tell you anything. I know you're not likely to buy what I'm selling, so let's just move on to greener pastures. I'm coming up close to a deadline, and I'm sure you're swamped with making sure good people don't lose their jobs, so I'll just be on my way and let you do that. Ciao! The indoor salesman tried to close the door, but Agent Rogers blocked it with his arm. He was tired of this SCP giving him the runaround, and he was going to keep the indoor salesman here if it was the last thing he did. He demanded the entity stay and be interviewed, and other members of the task force apprehended the salesman, making sure he couldn't leave the room. The indoor salesman, now held in place by several armed men, seemed to finally relent. He told Rogers, I'm busy, so I'll tell you what. I'm gonna give you something, no money out of your pocket, and we'll call it even. Sound good? Rogers, just wanting to get this whole thing over with, agreed to those terms. Three seconds later, every agent on the scene was dead. 
and the indoor salesman was able to straighten his tie, pick up his briefcase, and walk through the door to the bathroom. When the bodies of Agent Rogers and the rest of the MTF Row 4 were examined by Foundation scientists, the cause of death was found to be, in every case, thousands of coins suddenly appearing in not only their pockets, but also inside their stomachs, lungs, and even under their skin. Later that day, the indoor salesman was reported at a home in the same neighborhood. He was seen trying to sell the house's owner, 80-year-old retiree Alan Johnson, a Glock 18 pistol in exchange for his attention. As he had done so many times before, the indoor salesman disappeared through another door before the Foundation was able to reach the scene. And when the SCP arrived, they found Mr. Johnson still alive, but now missing his brief frontal cortex the part of the brain that controls attention. It's likely that, because of the nature of the entity, SCP-1879 might be entirely impossible to contain. The Foundation might never find out anything more than what they already know about the indoor salesman, the way he's able to manifest behind closed doors, or the reason he has to keep filling quotas for an unseen boss who apparently doesn't have a very good sense of humor. So, if you're ever in Washington State, be careful who you open your doors to, especially if the knocking you hear is coming from inside your house. But now, if we could have just a few moments of your time, we've got something real special for you. It's SCP-001, which is the real 001. This is a 30-for-1 deal that you can't pass up, so go watch now.